If I've learned one thing from my over 3K hours in Rocket League, it's that there are a lot of ways to mess up. So in this video, I'm giving you my full walkthrough on what I would do versus what I would avoid to rank up the fastest if I was reset back in Platinum and I had to get up to GC in the shortest time possible. So if you're watching anything below GC, this is sure to save you hundreds of hours by the end of the video. If you're new here or don't know me, my name's Luke and I'm known as a top 0.1% Rocket League coach and for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we take gold through champ ranked players like you up to GC in just six weeks or less. And after signing apparently Jack as head coach, we just had our biggest launch in months. So when this video drops, we'll be officially reopening enrollment early for our next launch to hopefully catch up with overflow from last season. That means if you're looking for that GC or even SSL title, we just restocked 100 seats and they won't last long. So DM me on Discord with the keyword first if you're interested and I'll make sure you get in before we book out. I'll have my Discord first link down below and let's cover how I would rank up if I was shot back down to platinum. Okay, we're covering the six concepts I wish I would have changed, beginning with number one, settings. The very first thing I would do if I could go back would be to fix my settings from the start. When I started out, I made the mistake so many players do, which is not giving any thought to my settings. Of course, you can get a quick bump just from changing off of the default camera settings and camera shake and controls like that. But the thing that will hold you back even more that most people miss is setting up good key binds from the start. Your controls need to be set up in a way that you can chain together inputs to do the complicated mechanics like boosting, jumping, air rolling, and all these different things at once. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this and I just copied Rizzo's controls to start out. So I've had to learn how to play the game using my joystick to drive, which I think is less than ideal. And this is not to mention all the other things I was lacking, like a directional air roll, which they didn't need back then, but now I recommend you have and all the rest of it. So I won't go into every every setting here, but bottom line is do yourself a favor and from the start, set up your camera settings and your key binds based on a proper guide. I'll have one from myself linked on screen, but anything will do, do not skip over settings. The second thing I would do to rank up the fastest is learn the basic principles. The reason I would focus on game sense before mechanics is because I think game sense is always going to be your quickest way to rank up. Unlike mechanics that you have to, you know, train and develop over time with game sense. Once you understand a rule, you can apply it and see results instantly. The mistake I think most players make, especially when you're coming from a game, unlike rocket league is just not understanding the basics of rotation, back post corners, and basically how the game works. But if you can just stick to like a basic play style of following rules like back post and stuff like that, you'll not only learn the game so much faster because you'll have some decisions already pre-made for you and you can just focus on the play. You'll also avoid forming bad habits that take a ton of time to unteach later. If you don't believe me, Wait and Pilkin did a video a little while back where he played ranked on literally a piano keyboard and was able to, I think, get up to champ just by rotating properly and with good decision making. So trust me, start with principles. If you're a beginner, this will slingshot you through plat and even diamond. I made a video on some of the most important principles to learn. It's called the only video you need to rank up in Rocket League. I'll have it linked on screen because it got a ton of really good feedback. So check that out first. And then if you still want more as you're climbing through like diamond and champ, you can check out my road to SSL series or road to SSLs from other creators like flakes are really good. But bottom line is if you think your mechanic mechanics are good enough for your rank, your decision making is probably what's lagging behind. Get this stuff down first and you're going to progress way faster. Concept number three, mechanics and learning stuff in order. This is probably the single most important concept to understand because if you choose the wrong stuff to train or try to train it out of order, that's how you waste the most time getting to whatever rank you want to get to. I remember when I started out, I had an obsession with training redirects. As I got better though, I realized that some mechanics 
mechanics are more useful than others. And when I really thought about it and boiled it down, I came to realize there are around three main things that you want to look at if you're deciding whether you need to learn a mechanic or if mechanics are holding you back. The first criteria is how common is it? The more common a mechanic is, the more you'll rank up if you'll learn it. Number two, how quick is the mechanic to learn? Something like air roll is going to take hundreds of hours to master, whereas a wave dash could take an hour. And number three, how easy is it to do consistently? When you apply this to something like a redirect, for example, you realize why redirects are bad to learn. They're not common, they take a while to get down, and it's not very easy to do consistently in game. Yet, when you compare redirects with something like a fast aerial, fast aerials are pretty common, quick to learn. I mean, once you know it, you kind of know it. And compared to redirects, for example, you can do them consistently, as long as you don't backflip. And so if you're a beginner watching, I recommend you start with stuff like that. Think half flips, think wave dashes, fast aerials, kickoffs. These are things that if you learn, you'll use again and again, and compared to things like air dribbles, will not take as long to master. Once I got to champ, I'd probably start learning some of the more like middle difficulty stuff that takes a little longer to learn, but most importantly is still common. Things like wall play, backboard play, shadow defense, maybe even air roll a little bit. And that alone should be good enough to get me to GC. But at base level, if you understand this, you're going to fly by all the people at Diamond and Champ that claim to be mechanical, but really can't do the basics. Okay, concept number four, play style. And since I rambled on with the mechanic section, we're going to keep this one simple. Aggressive versus defensive. What should your play style be? From my experience, you should just play defensive. I found that getting GC, at least in twos and threes, it's not about who makes more plays, but about what team makes less mistakes. Since most players at the lower ranks don't have a good idea of how to rotate and how to spend time off the ball, it's better to be the one that's behind, always ready to cover for them, than going in for plays often and hoping that your teammates can play defense. Like I said, this is a total generalization, but most players have much better offense than they do defense. So if you can get your defensive play up to a base level and you just focus on minimizing mistakes, you'll rank up way more than if you try to put that all into scoring. Concept number five, training. Free play versus workshop maps versus training packs. What's the best way to progress the fastest? This question is hard to answer, so I'm gonna tell you what I did, and then I'll say what I think you should do. The best thing for me when I started playing Rocket League was training packs. When you start out, you have basically no mechanics, so you need to build things from the ground up. And what I quickly learned was that having a training pack set something up for you is super helpful, especially if you can't set it up for yourself. Once I got into champ though, the minute I was able to start doing workshop maps, I basically transitioned into only doing them. And the biggest thing that helped me improve there was probably getting my aerial car control down by doing rings maps. Nowadays, sitting at around GC2, I basically only do free play because at least at the point I'm at now, workshop maps aren't as challenging and training packs aren't quite as necessary. Necessary. For me right now, it's more just about slowly increasing my speed and getting my recoveries and movement as clean as possible. So what's the best way to train? The only answer I can give is it depends. Certain mechanics have better ways to train than others. For example, I think rings is the best way to train aerial car control. And training packs are the best way to train very specific setups. Think wall play or backboard play. But in other cases, you can practice things multiple ways. So my best advice for training is simply do it all. The main thing that you should use to decide what you're using to train is if it's challenging you or not. The more challenging something is and the more you're failing it, the more you're going to improve from it. And I think that's how you get better the fastest. Okay, lastly, ranked. What game mode should you play to rank up the fastest? 1v1 versus 2v2 versus 3v3. This is going to sound weird, but if your goal is just to get to GC, 3v3 is the easiest game mode, I think, to get it in. From my experience playing, 1v1 is significantly harder than 2s and 3s, and 3s is just that little bit easier to rank up in than 2s. I think it's because you don't need as good mechanics in 3v3, and you can spend more time off the ball. However, if my goal was to get SSL, I would probably play majority 
ones and twos. This is because to get SSL, you need to be mechanical and ones and twos just gives you the most reps to do that. I've talked with both apparently Jack and Com about this, and I think they both said they would do about 80% 2v2 and 1v1 and just that last little bit 3v3 if they wanted to get SSL because it's much easier to turn a ones or twos player into a threes player than it is to turn a threes player into a ones or twos player. But yeah, if you want long-term improvement, grind ones and twos. And if you just want the easiest game mode to climb in, threes is the way to go. Okay, high level, that is everything I could think of. If you want more details, click one of the videos on screen or check out my Discord. We're the largest improvement Discord. It's completely free. And of course you can leave whenever you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.